Hello and welcome to I'll Sleep and I'm Done Talking into it. But we don't sleep until that bit at the end of the video when it just says like, like, would you like to replay the video? Like that bit comes up. But I think now YouTube's updated to which it will just give you a recommended video afterwards instead of just a regular loop. A little bit annoying. D today we're talking about comic books. Comic books we've made. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I'm gonna let you go first. Because What's your name? Uh, we already did our names. I'm gonna did we? Keep again. No, I didn't do my name. Do I'm Damon, by the way. Fuck it, we're starting again. Uh, we're, <laughs> no, we're not. Yes, we are. <laughs> we'll keep the no, recording going. Keep... I'll edit it out. It's fine. <laughs> fuck it out. Hello, I will. Oh, fuck. Hello. <laughs> God, shush. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hello, and welcome to I'll Sleep and I'm Done Talking, to which we don't sleep until you have to hit the replay on the video. And then we're awake again. And it's an endless cycle. <laughs> I'm Kara. <laughs> good, good. I'm Damon. It's Valentine's Day, and we're talking about all the comic books we've made. What? I'm gonna say that maybe you go first, because I have a sneaky suspicion that you're gonna have a lot more comics than I do. I probably am. Uh, it's bleh. Yeah, so... I've been drawing comic books for, like, a fucking very, very long time. I think I started doing it when I was, uh, like either 10 or 11 is when I started getting into it and that's where I kind of started taking drawing a little bit more seriously um, I don't remember if I've told this story on the podcast before but it basically started because we uh, had an author come visit our school I, I think it was John Heffernan I think is his name uh, he uh, he wrote like um, the, the, the two that I remember at the moment is Spud and Chips which are uh, what, uh, Spud is about a cattle dog, and Chip is about that cattle dog's uh, puppy, and it's just like, uh, kind, of, kind of like very rural Australia kind of story, just about this cattle dog just going through life, you know? Uh, but we had him visit our school, uh, and like, in one of our classes I was doing what I usually do, which is just drawing the entire time. I, if I remember correctly, I just drew this, like, um... I just drew like this cat and a dog uh, and it was like uh, they were like you know superheroes except they were just standing upright and they had capes on and that's all they were because <laughs> I was 11 years old <laughs> and like I don't fucking remember what the uh, like comic or anything was but it was probably just them like talking to each other or something and I was just doing that in class and he came over to me and he was like oh wow what are you, what are you doing and I was just like ah, I'm, I'm drawing <laughs> and I was like oh that's real cool and um, he actually uh, came to our school for two days, uh, like, for what I remember. Yeah, he came came to uh, to our school for two days. First day he was there, it was just like business as usual. He came over, he like looked at what I was drawing, he uh, like complimented my stuff, and it, and it was like, yeah, I feel good about this. Second day he came over was very interesting because uh, he uh, like <laughs> because he was like. Okay, everyone, we're going to be making some comic books today. And I was like, oh, he got my idea. <laughs> That's so rad. That's so fun. It's so fucking rad. That is like a core memory for me, for, for him to basically just be like, oh, yeah, that's a cool idea. Let's do this as a, like an activity tomorrow. And I don't fucking remember what comic I made the next day. <laughs> <laughs> but like that's basically what kickstarted um, me just making comics like all the time that entire year in like grade five yeah grade five definitely grade five um so thank you John Heffernan I fucking I hope I'm getting the fucking name right <laughs> for basically just uh, making me do comics I guess I, I don't fucking know <laughs> um but that kick started like uh yeah just yeah like i said I, I just kept making comics and they weren't good but i i still did them there was i mainly um i started off doing just like what i've described in my notes are like a uh, variety comics that feel like family guy cutaways in retrospect huh because <laughs> they were like because like they, they were they were comic books and my perception of comics was like funny haha like newspaper comics or just like Simpsons comic books so they're comedic, but I didn't know how to write comedy 
So it, it basically entailed like the, the only thing I remember from that set of comics is like um, an Astrosaurus character. Astrosaurus is a different book series, um, but, but one, one of those characters being and keep in mind this this character is a Stegosaurus, just like a full on Stegosaurus. And he's being carried by a bird over a mountain, and he just gets dropped, but like directly on his crotch, and it was like. That's the joke. <laughs> oh, fuck. Which is like such a fucking eleven-year-old joke as as well. <laughs> it's just like, yeah, get joke. hit in the crotch. <laughs> what was that? Sorry. It's, a, it's such like a a particular adult animation comedy. Aha! Like Futurama, The Simpsons. Yeah. Guy. Like it, it's South Park. It really hits all those spots. Yeah. I mean, like, um, we, we grew up watching what, yeah, Futurama and The Simpsons. That's, that makes sense. I'm like, yeah, that's a good, like, yeah, no wonder that's what you would have been inspired by. And that's the funny haha you did. Yeah. And uh, I don't remember a single other thing from that comic in particular. But then I made, like, um, two others. There was a comic series, and then there was just, like, a standalone thing. Uh, so the main one, I called it Doggy vs. Kitty, which is based directly off of the the like um uh superhero cat and dog things that i made uh like right all the way back at the start and i named them after my own pets the cat's name was annie because we had a cat called annie minx uh, and the dog's name was leo because we had our dog at the time whose name was leo and those those were the two main characters at the time the, the first comic was literally just like a cat and mouse chase kind of thing like the like, Leo chases Annie, like, around a yard, up a tree, and then it's very Looney Tunes, so, like, that all that happens, and then, like, Leo, like, gets his up and see, I, I don't fucking remember, like, a branch falls on him or something. I remember at one point he got a fucking chainsaw out to cut down the tree. <laughs> I really wish I still had these comics, because, like, oh my god, it, it would be so weird to just read them. Oh, yeah, that would be very strange, like, that, like, moment of, like, Oh my god, that's what I used to do. But no, a chainsaw is very funny. <laughs> very yeah. Very Looney Tunes. Very <laughs> Tom and Jerry. I, I fucking, I watched Looney Tunes so much as a kid. That was like, because we had just two uh, box sets of VHS tapes. And it was like Looney Tunes, like classic collections or something like that. So there was like Twe uh, Tweety Bird and like um, Wile E. Coyote and stuff like that. Uh, oh, fucking, I don't remember the others. There wasn't a ton of Bugs Bunny, weirdly. Uh, Fair enough. Really? Yeah, no, really not that much. It was like, hmm. Oh, well. <laughs> I mainly remembered, like, Wile E. Coyote, because that was my favorite. And, oh, no, wait, no, there was Bugs Bunny, but there wasn't a lot of Daffy, because there was a lot of Bugs Bunny with, um, uh, what, what's the Tasmanian Devil character? Ta what's his name again? Tasmanian Devil? Taz. Is that literally just his name? Yeah. Taz? <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> So those What's the that uh, Bugs ones. Bunny character? What's his name? <laughs> <laughs> a Daffy Duck? Porky Pig? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's how that comic started. And then immediately, like, that, that was the first, like, quote-unquote issue of it. And then the second issue, uh, it was an immediate switch. So it was like, the dog was is now like super super dumb and the cat is like very very smart and that's the entire crux of the series from that point and it just keeps going like that uh so like annie just becomes like very like sassy and snarky and just kind of like tired of leo all the time because he's so stupid leo is just very dumb very like homer simpson uh type of behavior i would say okay. i literally made like a um one of the issues was literally just like the time travel treehouse of horror episode with like the toaster and everything and, and like like i literally used the same toaster because i thought it was like uh, the toaster was some kind of like cliche or like trope and i was like oh yeah i'm sure plenty of other things use the toaster as a time traveling machine i didn't fucking know i was like 11 <laughs> But that was a series that went on for a while, and eventually I added a third character called Mark the Mouse. And we did actually have mice at one point, but they were not named. Because, like, I, from 
the story goes is that uh, we had two male mice, and then suddenly there was a shit ton of baby mice. So it was not two male mice at all, and uh, I'm pretty sure they were only in our home for like, I don't know, maybe a month tops. <laughs> Because, like, mice just breed like crazy. So I didn't really have a creative name for him, so it was like, yeah, Mark. He's like a... He, he's a mouse. He's, like, super smart and scientific. And he's, like, the... Uh, kind of, like, the... Weirdly, the everyman in, um, in this trio now. I don't remember when he was introduced. But... Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't remember a ton of the plots from that specific comic series. One of them I remember the most is... Uh, like they're in an adventure in like the Sahara Desert, and I remember that because that was a two-parter. Oh, and I also, <laughs> yeah, did exciting. Did you draw part two or just do part one? I think I did draw part two actually. Oh. Yeah, and uh, I also, <laughs> fucking hell, I also remember it because of one very specific thing. Uh, like you know, Man vs. Wild. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to you know the, the episode... audience to the person who? doesn't know what Man vs. Wild is. <laughs> Man vs. Wild is basically uh, this guy called Bear Grylls is where he goes into the wild and just survives. It's like, it is a fairly scripted show because like he's got camera people going with him everywhere and such, but it's basically just meant to be a show of like, if you're in this situation, here's what you would do. And it's like, just yeah, just like going around the world, like surviving in this treacherous environment. He's, he's eating witchy grubs. That was in the that was that was very gross but the the reason why i bring that up is because there is an episode where i'm pretty sure it is the sahara desert that he goes to or it's it's i don't remember the exact desert it may have been that one um no wait i think it actually might have been an arabian desert somewhere i don't remember but anyway um there, there's a there's a place he goes to where he's offered goat's testicles as a meal and me <laughs> Me in my 11-year-old brain is like, that's a great idea for a plot. <laughs> Let's put this in the Sahara Desert special. <laughs> but it's just like a one-off joke somewhere. I don't, and like, it, with all of these comics, I don't remember how they begin or how they end. I just remember bits and pieces. But that was like my longest run in comic series. I think I got up to like maybe nine or ten issues. And oh, I had damn. a bunch of others planned. Uh... And also, like, the way I made these comics was basically just, like, printer paper, fold them in half, and then just put more printed, uh, like, folded paper inside of those. And then I just did, like, a 6x6 six six grid of, uh, 6x6? Six six? No. It's, like, six panels per page, but they were all, like, perfectly symmetrical squares, basically. Um, fucking, what was I getting into? Okay, yeah. Uh, so... <laughs> I'll like mention this next one, and then I think I'll hand it over to you for a moment. Yeah. Um. So, that was the main thing I was drawing at the time. I also like at the age of like twelve or something, got what was probably my first um like special interest <laughs> uh, that I can remember at least, and that, my dear listeners, was Slender Man. Because that was at the, like, the height of, oh like, uh, the creepypasta gosh. popularity. And, yeah, I, I, I was a creepypasta kid, you could say. <laughs> Refer back to the drawing episode. Yeah, <laughs> that's true, I did mention that. <laughs> so, like, I'm pretty sure I did have, like, Slenderman as a cameo in, like, a couple of my other comics. And then, at one point, I just made, like, a s entire, like, Slenderman one-off comic. Uh, and I especially remember it because I didn't know how to draw people. And that's why I just, all I was drawing was cats and dogs. And like, that's why that doggy versus kitty thing just kept going. It's because like, <laughs> I kept drawing the main characters and whenever their owners had to, uh, come into shot, I basically just drew their legs and nothing else. So the Slender Man series basically forced me to kind of learn human anatomy, even just a little bit. And... The way I characterized Slenderman was interesting. It's like, it, it's like, because everything I did at that age was just very goofy, very Looney Tunes, very Simpsons and such. So, like, he was just kind of not very serious. He was like, he was intentionally killing people, but, like, he wasn't very threatening in a way. 
and he just like lived in a sewer pipe for some reason. That's where he slept because Slender Man sleeps apparently. Oh well, yeah, he's gonna get some <laughs> shot face. Isn't it right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And again, I don't remember the plot of this comic. <laughs> I just remember I didn't know how to draw people. And also Slender Man lives in like one of those giant drainage uh, sewer things. It's like, because you've watched Rango? Yeah. Yeah, you know when he gets flushed out of like the pipe thing? No, it's a bit, uh, dude, I saw it in theaters. <laughs> Fair. Um, I own so a copy of, now. But... So to those of you who have watched uh, the movie Rango and remember this scene, it's the scene where he gets flushed out, where he's in the desert for the first time and he's flushed out of a water pipe. And there's a lot of water with him. Uh, just imagine that, but like human sized, basically, because Rango's a little lizard. <laughs> and that's what Slender Man sleeps in. Uh, I want fan out of my desk by Monday. <laughs> I demand fan art of my comics, please. <laughs> of Slenderman having a uh, having shut eye in a in a like a drain pipe. Yeah. Fuck, that's such a fun image. Uh, Fucking eleven to twelve year old me w had some great ideas. He just didn't know how to execute honestly, on them. <laughs> we could make that as a T-shirt for us, couldn't we? Just oh us my too. fucking! Like just you'd, you'd, us, you'd yeah. have to draw it or whatever, and we do like uh, us too. Maybe Eric, 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 <laughs> Eric could be on Yeah, there. that's true. We, I don't know if we could <laughs> sell it. That's the catch, but uh, parody. Probably not. <laughs> but, and also, but no he, one has to know. But is, is Slenderman royalty free, or is he just one of those internet? I guys? don't actually know. Because he did have a copyrighted movie. Yeah, because like the backstory of how he was made is like kind of convoluted Cause, in so, a way. Because like, he, ooh, not uh, yes or no. Uh, it was a Photoshop. Well, to me, it is. It was a Photoshop competition. The guy yes. did two photos. It won in that. Then it started yeah. to get a bit more lore when Marvel Hornets came out, and like still early on into like Marvel Hornets thing it was the Sunderman game came out, which that was the thing that came really popular. Um. And then people looking for more stuff found Marvel Hornets and found the original photos. And that's kind of the base run of Slenderman until he got very big. And he got big at the same time as all the YouTubers got big for all the Let's Plays. Yeah. Yeah, and then there was all the Let's Plays of uh, the game Slender. And that's how I found out about it, because I was watching YouTubers play it. Yeah. And then my creepypasta rabbit hole begun. <laughs> Because, like, I think we've mentioned how we've... We've mentioned Creepypasta before on the podcast, haven't yeah, we? Yeah, it would be the episode we talked about your drawing experience. That's true. That is true, yeah. yes. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, that, that was the main thing I was drawing at the time. Like, I had them in, like, this uh, clear plastic, like, folder sleeve thing as well, and I carried it around with me everywhere, <laughs> like, to school and everything. Because I would just make these at school. Uh, and like I would show my friends to them and like I got some of my friends into like making a, a couple of comics as well They didn't take it as seriously as me, but you know <laughs> <laughs> They didn't take it as seriously as me, but you know like they had their fun didn't they? They had, <laughs> had, a bit of, had a bit of fun over there didn't they? But uh, me, oh, I'm over here making the bloody big bucks, <laughs> tell you what Oh, I remember fuck. like uh, uh, one of my friends at the time um, um, a fucking oh, oh, train of thought come back to me Ooh, he was really into Captain Underpants so he he made his own comic that was like kind of like based off of Captain Underpants and me having not read Captain Underpants at that age was like cool I'm gonna go back to um, like these animals slaughtering each other <laughs> or just like like my Looney Tune stuff <laughs> I loved hearing you catch the thought train. Yeah. <laughs> I loved hearing you jump onto that train and be like, oh, phew, almost lost it there for a second. Yeah. Fucking hell. Oh, it's, it's so good to be back doing this fucking show. I fucking, I know, right? I love doing this. It's so, that's, God, that's great. That's so oh, my fun. God. That's how I got started in comics. So I'll hand it over to you. So I was big into Captain Underpants. <laughs> Mm hmm. I. <laughs> Kyron got me into it, I'm pretty sure. Best friend Kyron at the show. Uh, he 
you got me into Captain Underpants. I love Captain Underpants, and pro I might still do. The, the movie was real good, and I haven't watched the show, and I still I want to reread the books at some point. But um, I was really into it, and I was also into drawing. I wasn't particularly skilled at it, but I was really into it. Uh, so I, I, I vaguely re I don't remember exactly how it started, but prank. But I assume it would have would have been me. But I turned the car and I went, hey they were able to make comics and they're in elementary school we're in engineering school we could make comics and try to sell them <laughs> <laughs> we could try to try and pull the exact same stint oh that, my god um, that uh george and harold are pulling um and so we created these two panel comics called shoot um hmm. now the one f so one panel and uh, they'll be like you know like the little it would be like a A3, no, A5, maybe, like sized. A5? Like an Is A5, it big or small? A small. Um, okay, yeah, probably A5. Yeah, like an A5, little sized, like a sketch, like, like, like a little drawing book, like paper stuff. Like, it was this weird material. Paper was very light. I don't remember what it was called. It was like a bit see through. Um, we had it only in primary school. Um. <laughs> Oh, I'm trying to see if I remember. I I think it was like about. used as like kind of like throwaway paper. You could do some mass on it, throw it away. I used it to draw I comics. I guess so. Um, was it lined or clear paper? Clear. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know what the fuck they were. They had like this rubber on the top bit. You could rip off a page real easy. And the rubber like kind of held all the pages in, and you could like rip it off like a good tear. Oh, I feel like I'm. Yeah, I know yeah, what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, those. I don't know what the fuck they're called. Basically, I got one of those, like one of those things, like one page is one panel. And so the first panel was a really ridiculous stunt, like 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 some like if you put Tony Hawk on drugs, and that's what he was looking at, um, <laughs> like like some death trap defying stuff. And it's this little guy on a skateboard, a stick figure with a unique head, with like two Bart Simpson spikes and a flat line and like loot like semi-circle that or semi-oval that around put two like either two eyes or one eye I don't remember I tried looking I don't have any um, of this stuff at the moment or at least not that I can find um, mm. and, a little, and a little mouth and, he, and he'd be like shoot and he'd, he'd be like he'd be standing up there ready to do the stunt and the next panel was him falling to pieces as he had fucked up the stunt <laughs> <laughs> and it was him saying, shoot, and that was the comic. <laughs> we had very similar trains. Of I sold at those ages. one. <laughs> and made it for? 50 cents. Fuck yeah. <laughs> because even as a kid, I was underselling my art. Ah, uh, yes. It was probably. Like, at like, an early we age. We were all kids. Like, fucking. Like, I was a kid being like, well, we're not gonna have fucking money. <laughs> Mm. Um, Fucking so like that. I, it just remind, reminded me that like I didn't even. <laughs> I mean, this is a weird tangent, but I didn't even explain like how I drew like my doggy versus kitty characters. I still got like super old drawings of them digitally, uh, but I'll, I'll try to like describe how they look because this is an audio based show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so like uh, Leo the dog, he came about because uh, it was actually like in after school care. Uh, one of the older girls uh, just drew this dog on a whiteboard and I was like oh okay that's how you draw dogs so like their muzzle their entire lower half of their face is like a rounded rectangle and then they have like a semicircle top of the head and then just like two little two like dangling sausages on the side of its head so it looks like a a flying saucer basically <laughs> and like that that's how I that's kind of just how I learned how to draw dogs. Just dog. this one whiteboard drawing. Dog, look at you. Arf! Then flies away. <laughs> it's so funny because, like, real-life Leo looked nothing like comic version Leo. Like, real-life Leo was a miniature fox terrier. A very chunky mini fox terrier. But, like, it, you know, he has, a, like, a long nose and, like, pointy ears and such comic book leo was just like a fat beagle for some reason because that's all i could draw <laughs> and like annie was like fucking i i i don't know it was like a, a semicircle with two spikes on the top of her head and that's how i drew cats 
and like her whiskers were directly touching her like nose not the muzzle or anything just like coming out of the nose it was like i've oh god i've got old, like super old drawings like somewhere i'll have to send them to you later so you know what i'm talking about yeah well hey look we'll see <laughs> see how it goes we'll see yeah but anyway yes continue um yeah that's kind of it I, I don't really have much else to say about my particular about shoot like we did we did we i, I made probably like 12 like i probably made around about like maybe 10 comics of them sold one hmm. realized it wasn't a very lucrative business liquid Edge company <laughs> burned it for the insurance money which was nothing because we didn't have insurance um, <laughs> and i would have been maybe about a uh, i think 12 fuck did i make hmm. a comic every how the fuck that's, I was like, I'm like, no. If I was 12 for that, the next comic I made was was when I was 13. The next one I made was when I was 14. But it feels like <laughs> the widest spread of time. Oh, Fuck God. off! But and I'm like, no. But it has to have been 12. Either 12 or 11. Like it was that. So it is fun that we're drawing comics at the same time. <laughs> oh my um, God! Like compared to like my 20 comics and within the span of two years, yeah. Yeah, and I'm like, yeah, I did, I did one for 10 issues. Anyway, I just realized, I because th- I was looking before, and it was a second comic, and I was like, damn, I thought I had a copy of it. I think I know the drawer it's in, which I didn't check before. So I'm going to ah. quickly go and grab that and see if it's there. I'm just going to grab a bunch of books and then come over and then you talk about your next stuff while I'm flipping through them. So I'll be back. Yeah, so like, so um... um my <laughs> so yeah, I kept February. all of my comics like in that like plastic sleeve and i have n- absolutely no idea where it is i've probably turned this house nearly upside down multiple times before to try and find it because like i would love to be able to see them again because i've still got the image like fully ingrained into my head um i, re- <laughs> I remember i even uh made like a cover page for that folder which is something along the lines of like animal fights productions or something like that and it's just like a bunch of dogs and cats fighting because like I, I, I as as some people may know I was a warrior's kid so all, all of my knowledge of like fictional animals is basically just like they fight each other uh, and that's what's entertaining uh, and look I, I have no idea where it is maybe someday it'll turn up but like I've, I've kind of like accepted that I probably will never find it again <laughs> it's kind of sad but also a little bit hilarious um, I do remember, like, one other very short-lived comic. uh uh-huh. it, it wasn't a series. <laughs> it wasn't a series. It was a very quick, like, unfinished one-off that I made, um, in church club. <laughs> the, the, the club in my school that I went to one time, because so I was like, this might be interesting, and then it wasn't interesting. <laughs> So, like, uh, instead of studying the Bible, I basically just, uh, made this thing called, uh, Bat Boy, which is basically just meant to be, like, he's Batman, but, like, he's not Batman, he's, like, uh, he's, like, a, he's, like, a flying fox, he's a fruit bat, um, and he's got, like, a little costume on and everything, and he's, like, a little bit useless, honestly, from what I remember, because he's just a fucking, just, like, a is just a flying fox that's all he is it's <laughs> nothing special about him apart from like i guess he talks and like he can understand people he's like a little bit anthropomorphic but he's still just a fucking bat and i remember it, like b- because i came up with bat boy because of um the pc game spore because one of their default creatures is a creature called bat boy and it's a uh, it, it is an interesting thing to look at uh, God, a lot of my stuff can be tied back to Spore, honestly. Um, but that was, like, my pre-teens of making comics. Once I get into my teen teens, like, early teens, uh, that's when I'm using DeviantArt, and that's when everything goes on topsy-turvy. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. and because, like, I'm borrowing, uh, I get, like, shared usage of my my dad's windows xp computer i get access to digital art software including microsoft paint and win uh photoshop 8 and i i kept using microsoft paint because it was easier for me to use because of course 
Um, 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 um. So I started drawing a, a lot of my stuff digitally now. Uh, if I can, I don't remember what the first thing I, I th well, actually no, I think I, mm, no, I made a lot of stuff in paint at that day, at that age, so I don't really remember what the first thing I made was during that time, but because uh, I'm now influenced by the internet, uh, I've got more ideas basically. Um, fucking yeah, cause uh, yeah, cause I was using DeviantArt a lot. I had basically direct access to the Warrior Cats community, uh, and like I had a friend at the time where like they were kind of interested in Warrior Cats. I think they're like I don't I don't think they read any any of the books, but like they were kind of just interested in like writing stories and stuff like that. So we made some characters together. Um, I kind of like, uh, oh god, this, like, this era is like all over the place. Because <laughs> technically, every story I wrote at that point was meant to be written in the style of comic books, but not everything got turned into comics because it didn't really get past, like, the, um, like the writing and the concept art stages. But, like, I had a, a fan, uh, warriors story that i was making at the time and i like i was looking back at some of the old drawings and the old comics um from like way back when when i was like uh 13 14 they're not fucking bad like the the writing in them is actually like pretty good all things considered <laughs> it's like only every now and then i'm like that doesn't really make sense okay but uh i mean for the most part like um they were pretty good and like that's that's uh I was just writing a lot of warrior cat stuff and just cats in general. There's this, um, the, the one time I did stray away from writing cats that weren't warrior cats is when I made, uh, this very short lived comic, comic in, in, in uh, quotes, because I'll, I'll explain that in a moment. But it's basically about like, uh, street cats and, um, what would happen if this like really pampered domestic cat, uh, suddenly has to live on the streets. And, um, like, she meets this, like, <laughs> god, she meets this, uh, this male cat who's been, like, living on the streets his whole life. He's, like, pr pretty strong for, like, his... <laughs> it's so dumb now that I'm thinking about it. But it's basically, like, she, she just has to live on the streets now. And, like, I didn't fucking have a plot for it. But it, it sticks out to me in my mind because it wasn't even in, like, a traditional comic book panel style. Instead, they were like um, uh, individual 16 by 9 panels that really worked more as like a storyboard than anything else, but like Aww. colored and detailed storyboards. It was bizarre. Again, I'm gonna have to show you these later because it is like weird to try and like picture them in my head without looking at them directly. That's uh, fair but, enough. Like, yeah, and I was actually like, it, um, quite happy enough with that story at the time that I tried to remake it a little bit later when I was like 15 I think yeah 14 or 15 and like actually make it in a, a proper comic book style uh, but then like I just didn't really know what to do with the plot all that much so it only really got like a couple of pages <laughs> um, what else what else I could go uh, if you'd I like yeah, you go ahead while I try to remember some stuff. Because, um... So, I found another comic. Vague thing I did. Mm -hmm. I kind of called it a comic. I'll get to that one later. So, my next comic that I did... Was about 13. So, um... On the Ice Age 2, the meltdown behind the scenes... Uh... Mm -hmm. One of the things you can find there... Is a little drawing tutorial. It's like, here's how to draw like a very basic Sid the Sloth. And here's how to draw a very basic scrap for Sabretooth Wrath. Um, and they're real fun, real cool. And so I took the basic design of scrap. Like, like the because ba basically what it was was like, draw a triangle. That's the body. Draw an upside down. Draw, like, draw, connect up where the points oh, are. Oh, yeah. Draw another triangle. That's the head. Um, here's how the leg is shaped. Here's how you draw the leg. Um... It was very basic, very easy. It was like it was very fun. I really liked that behind the scenes. Hmm. Um, and so, I had a series of comics. That, like they set off as strips. I had to go through my old like 
art books I had in like like early high school to find anything. There was one in particular I was trying to find, but I couldn't find it. I don't know where the fuck it is, which is unfortunate because I I, I want to find what that is. But I did find elements of this character existing, thank God. Um, and basically, it's like that triangular shape. It's got the big like leg shape, a tail, two little arms, a nose with whiskers, a little bit of like lines of hair at the back. Well, not hair, but like little tufts of fur, whatever the fuck. Oh, triangle hmm. eye, side smile, uh, and that's a little rat that I drew a few comics of. Um, now, like, I was so... I got the one comic I found here, because this is clearly drafts for an assessment, and wow, that's a... Like, I think even at the time I was like, I guess it's kind of funny. Uh, <laughs> like, they're very... whatever jokes. Um... Like, so it's like, time to buy a new phone. Goes home. Now to see if it works. Three weeks later, finally got it to work. Then trips over and the phone lands in a compactor. Like, oh, come on. <laughs> Why the fuck do I have a compactor in my house? Like, <laughs> <laughs> like it's one of those sort of like, I don't know if I was trying to do an actual joke or an anti-joke here. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck. I don't... Okay. <laughs> that um, feels like a joke I would have made as well, honestly. Yeah, because we have the same sense of humor. <laughs> yeah. It's because we're fucking idiots. We grew up on the same <laughs> stuff. We, yeah, we're we a little different. You you went to some of the gore stuff earlier. You you got into Wild... Yeah. You got into Warrior Cats, where I got into yeah. Tom and Jerry. We had different levels. Um, mm. But, like... So stuff like that. I, mean, I did watch the, a lot of Tom and Jerry. But the main <laughs> comic that I remember this rat being in was... I, I can't remember how long this comic was, but I think I drew, like, at least three or four different things with him. Uh, was him and his pal Death, the Grim Reaper. Mm-hmm. So, an early sign his... that I very much... No, he didn't die. He hung out with him. Um, okay. <laughs> I don't remember what for. That's what I was trying to find that specific comic. Because I really wanted to know because I just have a vague memory of it. But I know I did it because I know how we drew skulls at the time, which is so so. It worked well enough. But, um. Ooh. I mean, like, we know I have a, I, a fascination and love and appreciation for the Grim Reaper as mm-hmm. a character or, like, the concept of death in media in that, like, type of shape or form. Mm-hmm. So no wonder why, even at, like, 13, I was like, yeah, I, I want to do something with this, which is crazy for a 13-year-old. I, like, I was like, because hearing you describe your comics, like, with creepypasta and stuff, I'm like, yeah, that's crazy, I'd never. Anyway, I'm going to draw a comic where a guy falls into a death trap and another comic where a rat meets death. Like, <laughs> like oh, no, shit, you're right, you're right, we're both just different, fucked. Um, yeah. <laughs> But this, I really tried to do this stuff with character. Because I really liked this character because it felt original. Oh, yeah. It didn't feel like I was just copying something. Yeah. Like, obviously, I took the base idea of how to draw a rat from a thing. But I took that and kind of made it my own. I colored it in all gray. I made it my own design. I was real chuffed with it. And I wanted to do things with it. But it's such a... I don't know. Like... It's like it's again. It's a funny page comic. Like, like the, the the page before my art book, it was like comic strips, and was like trying to analyze comic strip things. I have a Garfield comic in here, which you would t- like, you would say in your stuff. I read it, and I was like, <laughs> yeah, Garfield is funny. <laughs> uh, a little comic quick. John walks in, being like, Garfield, you have a bad habit. You leave the refrigerator door open. I'm trying to save energy. And then Garfield's got his arms up in the air being like, So am I! <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, I love that cat. He rules. Um, anyway, uh, yeah. so that's another comic I did. Uh, and then, uh, while well, I'm here, just because the other side one that's also in my art book, uh, is just a bunch of mm. stick figures doing stuff. Ah, yeah. I liked that. There's one joke in here, which I find fucking hilarious, because this looks like a bunch of, like, floating skies and stuff, and, like, some, like, one's got a working jetpack, one doesn't have a working jetpack, one's got jetpack boots, one's guys are hanging off a cliff, and there's, like, creatures from the below trying to consume things, and there's a guy with, like, a portal gun stuck through one half of a monster trying to leave and stuck through a wall, and other people cheering on, there's a guy with a top hat, 
um, there's a bunch of characters that have ripped the page and are trying to get through um, <laughs> and sending a guy down to steal I think a, I think this is a, I think this is a, uh, like a doubloon um, there's some people f doing sword fighting upside down on a thing um, and the one joke which I think is very funny is there's a guy rock climbing and in the like part that's like supposed to be the wall it says Sylvester Stallone in <laughs> because he's in a movie called Cliffhanger and the okay. guy's hanging from a cliff <laughs> and I'm like oh, fuck, nice. that's funny that's funny now nice. that's good shit yeah. that's funny Hell it's, like, yeah. it's like an alien trying to climb up some rocks but his ship is in the in the mountain anyway it, it was, I was like oh I, that would count as a little comic I and I mean technically there's an animation idea a stop motion animation I did of these type of guys oh, that fuck yeah. is I think privated on a YouTube channel that I mainly just use for assessments for uni hmm. so I'm not really gonna show up anywhere but you know it, it was fun I, I yeah. said, you know it was like a cute little stop motion animation I did when I was like 14 um hmm. Yeah, so I have I only have one more comic left, so I'm gonna pass it back on to you. Yeah, I mean I was gonna move on to like my mid to late teens, but you also before I go into that, I also just remembered like a slightly different uh, like like other comics I was doing at the time uh, when I was like an er early teen, preteen, because uh, like so my my parents knew that I liked drawing, so one of the things I got given as a kid was one of those giant, uh, like, A3 pads of, like, paper. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like, sketch pads, but, like, just a great big A3 form. I don't know why A3, they were way too big for what I needed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I just went ham in, like, making comics and, like, making these, like, l little silly jokes uh, and, like, making characters and stuff like that. And there was, like, two main recurring themes uh one was like spyro the other was dragons no no wait <laughs> dinosaurs it was spyro the dragon close and enough. dinosaurs were the main things close enough yeah because like i i liked drawing dinosaurs a lot as well i still love drawing dinosaurs i just haven't done it in a fucking while um they're just like getting into like these little goofy situations uh, not very funny, but still just, I, I don't fucking like, <laughs> the, the one thing that I remember is like, it's the Cretaceous extinction event where all the dinosaurs go extinct. It, it's like, uh, the, uh, like this T-Rex's kid is, is like worried about the meteor, like, like the, uh, the asteroid coming down. But his mother, oh no, like, he wants him to do his homework. No, not now. It's Cutting like commentary. Thing. Yeah. <laughs> it was just commentary stuff. And then, like, the other, the only other thing I remember, from, well, one of the only other things I remember from that, there is, like, by the way, no way in hell I'm going to be able to cover, like, even close to all the comics I've done. Because that's, like, all I did as a kid. Uh, but because i drew spiral a lot specifically like the um rebooted trilogy version of him and like i really liked cinder in that series as well um i just and and again i was on deviant art so there was a lot of spyro like, like tlos spyro fans so i i got into that as well there was just like a one like little three or four panel comic where like for some reason like um cinder is like a a smoker like she's just smoking a cigarette and Spyro's like, hey, you need to cut down on those. They're not good for you. And, like, Cinder's like, okay. And then she just, like, uh, breathes her, like, smoke element just right onto his face. Because, like, I don't even fucking remember if that's a real power that she has. Cutting like, commentary from smoke. demo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you're really hitting the big numbers. I was sitting there being like... I was, like, 12. <laughs> I, I was sitting there being like, what if... What if... What, 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 what if, a, what if a rat met death and they just have to solve a thing together or just kind of living like a like a slice of life and you're yeah. sitting there being like <laughs> cutting commentary yeah that didn't last very long because I, I went through it all and I was like these aren't very funny <laughs> so I just moved back to like the, the goofy stuff and then moved like, back to hitting like, a dinosaur the... and the ghoulies and being like hoo hoo got him <laughs> 
But yeah, and, and of course, like I, I'm also so young at the time. I don't know how comic panels work, so I just kept drawing like squares and rectangles, just building off of more squares and more rectangles, not planning them out. I'm just kind of like going along with the flow of like, oh shit, this needs to be like a slightly bigger panel. Whoop, it's, it's bigger. It's just like rows and rows of squares and stuff. But, but anyway, like, <laughs> moving on to like my mid to late teens. So one of the longest, uh, not longest, I guess, but like one of the oldest, like, uh like stories that i've made in my life is this thing called flightless and i actually like i put a like quite a lot of work into it there's like there's old archives and, and like artifacts of it on like my old accounts and stuff like that there were quite a few people like interested in it as well which is pretty cool to see uh it started out as like a wolf series because once again, I'm on the internet, and at that point in the internet, like, there was a, a few different, like, animated wolf series. Uh, just, like, you know, each animated by, like, one person, and then they grab some people in to do some voice acting and stuff. And then, like, use, uh, like, some neat royalty-free music and stuff like that. I don't, not all of it was royalty-free, though, and a lot of them have become muted because of that. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, oh, I want to do that. Um... And, and like these seri these uh, animated series at the time is like oh I must have mentioned them on a different episode before I'm pretty damn sure I have I'm pretty sure I have so I'm not gonna mention it again because I don't remember their names anyway <laughs> so like it was a it was a wolf series um, the plot of it was basically like you've got one kingdom of wolves they have uh, feathered bird wings the other they've got uh, like uh, more ghouly looking like uh, bat wings and then you've um you've got this one that's born in like the bird wing kingdom but it doesn't have any wings oh no shenanigans are going to ensue it's not shenanigans this is, it was a pretty fucking serious story <laughs> about like uh discrimination and stuff like that and then it just kept escalating from shenanigans the ensue <laughs> yeah <laughs> ah ableism yes shenanigans that's a, it's a Fuck perfect it mixture <laughs> Cutting commentary, you would think. I was writing like stories about uh, how much ableism sucks before I even knew what ableism actually was as a term. <laughs> now I want a T-shirt uh, that has your little like Grey Danes character within a suit that says "Cutting <laughs> Commentary." <laughs> that would be so funny. That's actually a really oh my fun god. Idea. That is a good idea. Fuck yeah. But um, yeah, I've got like the uh, like the uh, folder on my PC of like all of the, the digital stuff and like a few of the traditional art stuff that I've gone here there's a there's a lot of it there is quite a lot and I actually did start a comic of it and got a decent way into it because like I originally wanted to make it as an animated series and then I was like eh, I don't know that seems like a lot of effort so I made it a comic instead you know then, like, the got... least effort version of that <laughs> I, yeah that's so much I respect it, and that's amazing. But to be like, I'm gonna draw a whole comic run. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna make a whole animated thing. You know, that's a bit much. Dude. I'm gonna do a comic. Yeah, that's so Dude, much. I didn't have an ending planned, like at all. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> it like, was just most... one. Everyone just like made it up as they went along. Well, yeah. They just, like they just have had to drive up the, the stakes each time. <laughs> It's all on the fly. They didn't even have a script half the time. Have you seen Transformers 2? They made it up no. as they went along. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, that, that, that is a fun little uh, cutting commentary from uh, Kara, who did a, who just made a reference to the writer's strike of 2007. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. Anyway. Oh, my God. Yeah, uh, so I started the comic series. I, um, I like, looking at the actual, like, dates of these files, I started these in 2014. And I'm pretty sure I was, like, posting them at the same time as well on DeviantArt. Uh, who knows if they're still up? I don't know. I've, I've hidden most of my stuff Don't go off look. TV. As, as don't most go of, looking. As most of the stuff here, we encourage you to... You know what you should do instead? Watch the... Watch 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 one of the other podcast episodes we did. You know, yeah. That, do that instead. And if you know what my old DeviantArt is, forget about it. It's Run. not good. <laughs> You're gonna need just the head like, start. Just, like, block that account or something. 
Yeah, probably. Because I, I assure you, it's not very interesting. It's not worth keeping around. <laughs> it's not worth it. Yeah, but um, yeah, no, I started, I started that that one uh when I was like technically twelve at the time, but like thirteen in uh in the coming of that year, and I got a decent ways through it. I started out uh, doing them in MS Paint, um. They weren't in, like, the A4 size, of course, because I was doing it in MS Paint, and I didn't know how this, the actual sizes work. I just put in a rectangle. Uh, but, like, I, yeah, started them out in MS Paint, and then, again, because I had access to my dad's computer, and he had Photoshop 8 on there, I did little, like, embellishments on there in Photoshop 8. So, say if um, something needed to be airbrushed, or if, like, I needed to add a little glow effect. I used a lot of glow effects. I would make it in MS Paint and then uh, import it into Photoshop and then just add little glowy things. And it was real fun. Um, and then, like, part way through... Was it the... Um, yeah, no, at the very last page of, like, the, uh, the prologue specifically, I switched full on over to... Um, not Photoshop, actually. No, I switched over to Paint Tool Sci. Oh, wow. wow. I haven't heard that name in a while. I used yeah. Paint Tool Sci for some point in time. Yeah. <laughs> actually, I think my next comic was made on Paint Tool Sci. <laughs> Fuck. Maybe. Yeah. God. I can actually this maybe back like, check that. Hold on. This is uh, the trial version of Paint Tool Sci as well. I, I didn't know you had to pay for it, but like it wasn't pirated, surprisingly. <laughs> It was just the trial version, and I was like, oh, well, the trial's up now. Okay, cool. <laughs> but yeah, I switched over to Sai for the last page of the prologue, and then into chapter one. Um, it looks like full-on Sai for the entire thing, except for the text bubbles for some reason. Which is weird, because, like, old MS Paint especially was awful for using the text tool in there uh, especially because uh, in that you could only use the text tool when you were like fully like at a hundred percent zoom so if you needed to zoom in for like a small detail you couldn't use the text tool in there which is very strange uh but i got like a decent amount of um the way through just like making this as a comic i got i got a little ways into chapter one i got uh, how many pages? Seven pages into chapter one. The prologue, how many pages did that have? Thirteen pages in total. So I made a pretty decent amount of pages on there. Um, and then it got to the point where I was like, I want to make an animated series out of this. Oh my can you guess god. How, can you guess how far that went? Uh, an episode. No. <laughs> Nothing. Oh. <laughs> well, tech. You're technically right, but also technically no, that's not. That's even I... funnier. That's even funnier. It's like, hey, do you want to guess how far that went? Oh, anything? No. It was a thought. <laughs> I was like, I should have an animated <laughs> series, and then dropped the whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, technically, I did, like, quote-unquote, animate the, uh, the prologue of this. And, like, it wasn't fully animated. It was more like a slideshow than anything else. It was mainly, like, just uh, illustrations. I don't remember where those went. Um, or unless they're in here. I don't fucking know. No, that's too many folders to go through. I don't care enough to do that. Yeah. <laughs> but, like, I, I, uh, I made the prologue, and, like, I, I didn't even start the first episode. <laughs> and, like, uh, and, uh, and then I dropped it for a little bit. And then I did it again. <laughs> and I made another prologue. And then I tried to make a first episode, and it just didn't. It just didn't happen. Again, if you know my old account, but like I, I, again, forget about it. First of all, <laughs> why are you still thinking about it? We said to forget about it before. Why is it on your mind? Come on, move <laughs> on. Oh, look a thing. Look at the thing. Look at your desk. The way you're listening to this. You're listening to the lounge room. Look at Go your away. desk. Look at your desk. Look at look at the coffee table. You're driving and listening to this? Wow, that's crazy and good commitment. I appreciate just it like, a lot. Just don't just think about it. Like, look at the road. All. Don't don't look at things. Get your phone, has TV on it, throw it out the window. Put it in the bin. <laughs> throw it out the speeding car. You, you got TV on the phone, put it in the bin. Uh, you got it on your laptop? Oh, you don't need a laptop anymore. It's a desktop family now. <laughs> Hug it out a window. You got a desktop, there's TV on it, just pull the plug. Just pull the plug on it. 
Just rip it out of the wall. Just let it just watch the life drain out of your desktop size. And you're like, well, I'm done. I'm going to go and read a book. Go, go read a book. You sit down, like, just got to flip through a book. It's good. Way better. I'm very tired. So, anyway, <laughs> it's okay. It's a sleepy podcast. No, I know. I'm just. I oh, fucking hate. So. Like, interesting enough is, like, I, I posted quite a lot about that just uh, on, on my DeviantArt account. At one point, I got fan art. Whoa! Like, uh, uh, yeah! But they ring, didn't ring, ring, me. Ring, 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 they did it at me, is the thing. <laughs> ring, 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 ring. We got the fan so, out alum. We got the fan out alum. Bloody hell, we got a fan out alum. My goodness. My word. I love this fan out alum. Ring, 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 ring. Wow. So the, I can't wait to use that later. <laughs> The way I even found out about it was, like, uh, just one day when I was scrolling, I was like, I'm going to search my username on, on, on here and just see what pops up. And it was, like, 99% just my stuff, as expected. Um, or, or, like, other stuff that people have actually, like, added uh, me in, like, usually in, in, like, journal entries and stuff like that. Or, or just, like, here's a collab we did and things like that. And then, like, I find just straight up a fan art piece. Um, of like the main character and like they wrote my name in the description but they didn't at me or anything and I was like what and then I like I commented on the piece and I was like dude fuck yeah thank you that's awesome <laughs> and it was like from a few years ago as well and I was like oh my god I, I could have known about this for like ages <laughs> and it was just it was really neat to see it was, it was very very cool to see and like there were people who were just like genuinely interested uh, in the story and in the characters as well. And it was pretty neat to see. Uh, it's just too bad I couldn't fucking commit to anything <laughs> regarding uh, it. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that is unfortunate. Yeah. I'm like, I haven't really worked on anything regarding it for a while just because, like, it's kind of... It's, like, kind of gone out of circulation with the stuff that I write, but I've had it for long enough that I'm like, I I'm not going to get rid of it at this point. That's it's reasonable. Like, just, fuck, I've had this thing for nearly ten years now. I I'm keeping it. Damn. Oh, Timmy <laughs> Tomatoes, that's a long time. Yeah. Oh. And uh, I've got a bunch of other, like, concept art and just um, other drawings of, like, how it how it progressed further on. And, like, I wasn't really posting anything about it publicly at that point because I was, like, um, 16 uh, going through it. <laughs> mm. So I just uh, made a lot of stuff privately for myself. Uh, and it's just, just, yeah, no, just a ton of, like, concept art of, like, if I were to pick it up again, didn't really do anything with it, but still, I just had fun, like, uh, writing, like, the story, and, like, especially the world building was really fun to do, because it's, it was in an entirely fictional universe, so I didn't really have to adhere to a lot of, like, real life geography and stuff like that, so it was pretty cool. Um, 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 is there something? Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. another thing, La last thing from, like, my teens before I, like, I hand it off to you and then move into my adulthood comics. <laughs> it's very short, thankfully, but, like, uh, I tried to make, like, a Nuzlocke comic. Uh, at one point. Those are so cool! Fuck yeah! I know, right? I also I thought was... about making one of those, but had not the artist prowess to do it. But I would have <laughs> loved to have made one of those. Fuck yeah! Yeah, and I was doing like an actual Nuzlocke in my uh, Pokemon X uh, extra Of cartridge. course it would have been X. That makes sense. Of the time yeah, of the cause... era and when those Nuzlocke like comics were around. That yeah, that, that's Very probably reasonable. the cartridge that I gave to you, even though, like, I definitely wiped it clean. Because, <laughs> uh, like, uh, yeah, I had two Pokemon X cartridges, uh, because... And I asked for, I, and I, I think I paid for some money You for wanted it. it. <laughs> yeah, I, I did, because yeah. I hand... I, dude, that's not common for you, someone to not be interested in a thing, and I... Fucking Pokemon, you know? <laughs> Love them. Yeah. Love them the bits. They're great. Good shit. Good shit. I, I don't know how it. the fuck I convinced my parents to get me a second copy of the same game at that age. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. Because <laughs> so I was like, because, you know, like, it's Pokemon. You can't have multiple save files in those games. So mm. I was like, I want another save file for Pokemon X, and I already have Pokemon X and Y. <laughs> how the fuck did I do that? 
Oh my god, but yeah, uh, it was a very short-lived Nuzlocke. Uh, but it was based off of, like, a lot of other Nuzlocke's I was reading on DeviantArt at the time. Because, uh, like, they, they were such fun stories to follow around. Because it was oh, just, yeah. like... It was just, like, Pokemon, but they're more mature, and the Pokemon can fucking die. Oh my god, that's awesome and sad. <laughs> I like... Um, I, we, got into, <laughs> we got into Nuzlocke's for maybe different reasons. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> like, close enough. Like, the fact of, like, there is a more of a mortality rate to them does make it more interesting, and, have to f and the Force nicknames do add a lot more character to them. Like, obviously, mm. the factor of they die in that sad is a factor of their fun to get into. But, yeah. you know, I'm getting into it for the fun characters and seeing, like, an actual story happen in the Pokemon world. Mm. You know? The, yeah. the dying like the, the stories that fun. Yeah, and like the stories that people wrote about, uh, especially their Pokemon trainers as well, uh, was just really endearing. Because uh, there was two in particular that I remember. One of them... Um, fucking, which game does it take place in? I'm trying to remember. Uh, oh, fuck, which one is it? I don't remember, but they're like a... a fairly well-known artist on DeviantArt, and um, they make very, very gorgeous paintings. They're very good. The other one I actually do remember the name of is uh, Sam's Nuzlocke, uh, which, like, am I just going to straight up, s like, spoil one of the plot twists? <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, eh, it's a red... Eh, eh, spoiler alarm. Eh, eh, spoiler <laughs> alarm for who are those who are interested in Sam's Nuzlocke. Uh, it's a good Nuzlocke, to be fair. It's, pr it's pretty, pretty endearing. Uh, I, like, I haven't read it in a long time, but Well, the spoiler hey, remember... has gone off. Yeah, so, like, it's a, it's a Pokemon, like, red-blue Nuzlocke. Um, the, the main, the main thing that, uh, made me really interested in it, which is gonna be a surprise to absolutely no one, is the fact that the characters actually, the trainer's cross-dressing, basically. Uh, so, like, huh. the character's, the character's real name is Samantha, and she's just, like, going around to Sam. Uh, I don't remember why, <laughs> but like, it was just a cool twist to have. <laughs> just, uh, I mean, like, it is. You, you have, like, this um, basically, like, red-esque character going going by Sam, and it's like, he's just, just red, and then at one point, like, his hat flies off, and like, bam, it, it, it's a girl. <laughs> it's, Again, that's gonna be no surprise to anyone who knows me, like, why I would find that interesting. <laughs> mm. uh, but, yeah, those are the, t those are the two main Nuzlocke's I was reading at the time, so I decided to make my own, and I got five pages into it. <laughs> nice. I didn't even nice. get up to the part where I was meeting the other characters in Pokemon X that, like, you, uh, you meet at the table. I think I, like, I just got up to that part. Like, my trainer runs up to them, and, like, there's a, a shot of them, like, uh, waving to them and saying hi. And the next page is meant to be of the, uh, those characters. Uh, you don't even see them, because I didn't get that far. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, okay, so that... Yeah, I'll hand it back over to you. For <laughs> well, I'm going to quickly shout out the Nuzlocke comic that I got into. That Hell was yeah. also about Pokemon X. Um, which I think was, it's, it's, um, it was like Ginger Ninja Uwu. Like oh, yeah! Like yeah, that that's the other one that really influenced me. I was, like, trying to remember a third one. Yeah, that would be that one. Yeah. I was waiting for you to bring it up, and when you didn't, I was like, well, I, I know the other one. So Yeah. That, that one, one was really interesting, because it was, like, um, uh, I don't remember if it, I don't think it started out as a comic, because it was, like, a, a slightly animated uh, no, uh, well, the I'm pretty sure it did start as a comic, but there are YouTube videos of a dub of them. There are YouTube videos of a dub, but it did start it, out. It well, says, I remember it says comic it. dub. So, mm, look, yeah. That's, so that's, on that's, DeviantArt, where I remember reading it, it was like a flash uh, oh, kind of thing. Fun. So you can't watch it anymore. <laughs> uh, well, <laughs> which hey, is you very still, tragic you because there was a lot look of. It up. You can still look it up on YouTube and you can watch the that version. Oh yeah, it's, four it's a slightly different version from the original because like it's a it's a little bit more updated. Mm. But man, I remember the original like uh, Flash 
uh, thing, like, just in my heart, because, like, my god, that thing had so much time put into it, and, like, fucking, ugh, it was good, it was good, it was, like, a, I think it actually also helped me get into Pokemon X, uh, nice. when I was young as well. So we're gonna move on to my next comic, we're an hour and six minutes in. Which, in fairness, I'm going to cut, like, six minutes at the very beginning, because that was not yeah. fucking about. You were but dicking around. We're, we're, we're a bit in. Um, okay, yeah. we still got your adult host. I don't have much left to go anyway, so... Okay, uh, yeah, so... Go there was a YouTuber who was very inspirational for me. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, there's two. I feel like they'd influence this comic, these comics in particular. One, and was the reason I got into it, was the odd ones app, and the fact that they made stuff oh. on Tumblr, which is how I That's first right. learned of Tumblr. So, I liked their content, and they're like, yeah, and I was very inspired to make my own comics. Um, mm. So I made a Tumblr account, and I uploaded mm-hmm. 14 comics. Some of these mm. are just not funny, and just not jokes. <laughs> um, but there are a few that are good, and I will share them. Uh, Hell yeah. I will share, I'll post them, I'll send them to you, Demo, so you can mm-hmm. see them, and I will describe them to the audience. Who's listening? Um, where? So one. Co- so the first comic we have here is a little comic of, and it's very much if you if you've seen an Astaf movie <laughs> visual look, it's just that I basically just used the circle tool and the line tool, and I made characters. I mean, in fairness, this is a very Astaf movie joke. <laughs> Uh, the joke is so one so two characters are on the screen. One of them asks the other one, Why aren't you wearing the watch I gave you? The other one, I can't. Why not? We don't have arms. Oh somehow <laughs> um, they're like this like solemnly looking downward <laughs> at each other's bodies. Yeah, like they're just looking down at their own arms and like, mm, damn. Then I got one comic mm. here, which is uh, it, it, is a, it is one person with a circle head walking towards a person with a square head as they walk <laughs> past each other, and then the guy with the circle head's like, wait a minute. <laughs> I genuinely love that. That's good. One of the other ones I really like, so it's one guy holding up a sign that says, no foul language, and he looks over at another guy who's also angrily holding up a sign that says, no language in brackets in general, and the first person <laughs> screams what at them. I think that is hilarious. That's fucking good. <laughs> um, now, you might be thinking, oh, some of these are kind of actually funny. I'm only showing you the ones I like. <laughs> yeah, fair. <laughs> there, there, some of them are, like, one is of dark humor, and I'm like, that, look, I, look, it, at 14, making that, that could have been so much worse. Oh, but, yeah. Um, like, like it's, it's fine, but I'm like, eh, I don't know, We don't talk remember. about the things I was making when I was 14. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we skipped over that time. We were, uh, uh, like, we were, I was a dumb, fucking dumb 14-year-old. Very unfunny 14-year-old as well. <laughs> I was at least a little bit funny. I have another comic here. <laughs> person running in screaming. The other person, what's wrong? Person one, the world is ending. No, it's not. Person gets crushed by a giant rock. Other person screams. <laughs> oh, that's a rock? I th- I thought that it's was supposed a to be like of cheese. It's supposed to be a meteor, but you know, whatever. <laughs> I thought it was like a, a giant block of Swiss cheese. And now uh, I do have a favorite comic. I have a favorite one, and I will share. And I do genuinely think this one is really funny, but mm-hmm. it needs some explanation. Mhm. So it is a lamp screaming, and then two scientists being like, "Where did we go wrong? No idea." <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to explain why there's just, like, a ton of transparency underneath it? Oh, because I used the same format as all the oh, other ones. To, and I just cut, to crop it. I just cropped it. I just cut it out. There we go. I did it. <laughs> so, like, okay, my uh, our view on the Discord screen is, like, oh, because sh- these are... Yeah. It, You'll see it when I... These are all I, square. Gonna, oh, gosh. These yeah. are all square. This last one is just, like, a rectangle... But yeah, because it's like the same canvas size as all the other ones, you just, instead of cropping the canvas, you just took the, you just didn't just, fill in the rest. I just, just removed left it as the is. background. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> um, but my favorite, so 
Now, that joke is hilarious. I think it's very funny to have a lamp screaming and the other people being like, we fucked <laughs> up. What the hell? Um, like, but what basically, you wrong? <laughs> so that comic was inspired from in learning about science and learning about like how light works versus sound works and how they're two different like systems oh, and yeah. like I'm like what if you fucked that up <laughs> what if you <laughs> fucked up making light and you made sound oh my god which technically does happen if you're trying to make a light bulb like work and it explodes like it just pops you've yeah. made sound instead of light yeah, true yeah Anyway, that was my favorite one because it's still like it's like it's dumb in a fun way. I'm like, yeah, okay. I like that. Yeah, no. So that's that was the last comic I really did. Like, I have ideas for things and I want to do. Oh, okay. I did just remember another one. So <laughs> I never went further with this. I had the idea of it and I wanted to make it into a comic. I tried out to test up some few characters. Basically, a slight evolution of the art style you can see here, but with a bit more detail. Um, and it was called Shadow Stick. And the premise of it was, was it was like a little plank of wood with a bandana on it and a fedora. It was the 1930s. <laughs> they mm. are a vigilante stopping crime, but you do not see them move at any point because they are a <laughs> plank of wood. And the supposed question is, is this a legitimate plank of wood or is it actually... Because it stops crooks. <gasps> it stops things. And, like, it, it, wait, what is, what, like, the story would be following these cops who are like, what the fuck is happening? <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> like, what the... That is fucking hilarious. And, like, genuinely, I, I was, it's, uh, like, that's the only one I'm like, I, I, I wouldn't mind doing something with that. Yeah. But I don't have anything really. Like, I need to, like, properly flesh out a story a bit more for it, but I think it would make a very fun one-shot graphic novel. Yeah. Um, just because, like, and, like, the mental image, and I drew this, like, one twice, I'd have to find, I think I have it nearby. I'd have to, uh, like, I, I don't know where it is, but, um, I had this image of the stick, s like, standing up on a rooftop with, like, the silhouette behind it. And like oh, yeah. looking over at a bank, like you know, like 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 old Batman, like Batman, but he set him yeah. in the nineteen thirties. That premise mm. was what it was, because just the mental image of like, oh shit, it's the stick, and then like you know, like seeing the like seeing like a bunch of crooks like get like beat up, but like not like like it just looks like a plank of wood is being like thrown, <laughs> or like hit, like it's 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 there's no implication of sentience <laughs> for the longest time. <laughs> It's just a lot of, like, what the fuck is happening? <laughs> it's these crooks being like, oh, there's a plank of wood. It's like these cops being like, there's a plank of wood over there. Turn around, turn back. It's gone. Where the hell did it go? Who took the plank of wood? <laughs> um, never came out into a comic. There was, like, a few, like, um, there was, like, a few, like, concept arts and a, like, uh, front cover. But, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. That's, that's kind of the it of my comics. Modern day, yeah. like I, I, I've tossed around. Oh fuck! I forgot about that one. <laughs> you go next. You go next. I go sit and think. Yeah, that's fair. So, uh, like, th there's a few like uh, newer stories that I've been tossing around that I do want to turn into comics at some point. Ones are like actively like being developed on, and I genuinely want to make them into full-fledged comics and such. It's just like getting the writing, like uh, planning stuff done and such. Um, where do I even start? Uh, I mean, like, for one, like, apart from, like, the, the big stuff, I still draw, like, very small, like, um, basically, like, Tumblr-style comics every now and then, where it's it just, like, four, like, two, three or four panels, like, so, like, like, very quick jokes or, like, autobiographical stuff, you know? Um, like I've got, I've got a few autobiographical. I have like, seen, I've, I've seen a few of them. They're good. They're fun. Yeah, you, yeah, you have. Uh, the most recent one I made was when I was at TAFE one time, uh, and I was just like, per person I was just talking to at the time, uh, like we we were just talking in every lesson we were in, and we were chatting to each other, and like I brought my sketchbook with me all the time, uh, but like, <laughs> and um. 
fucking comeback words, please. <laughs> so, um, I, I, I draw like, uh, I draw a lot of stuff and a lot of it is not for kids. The, the person I was talking to all, all, all the time is 17. I don't feel comfortable with showing a 17 year old the stuff that I'm drawing all the time. And it's basically just like a two panel thing of like me holding a, a, a comic, comic, me holding my sketchbook near, near me. And she's like, oh, can, can I look at your sketches? And I'm like, no, she's <laughs> just, just like, thankfully, like very enthusiastic. You're like, okay. And there's just like a giant caption pointing towards my sketchbook. It's like full of porn. <laughs> Oh, that's funny. Um, I found an image of this shadow stick, uh, like, thing oh, I did shit. at some point. I found that on my computer. Fuck yeah. Yeah, you, oh, you did the, uh, like, the, the, the thing in the, in the corner as well, like, the publishing thing. Yeah. That it's... was something I never did. Nah, because I wanted it to be a comic. Like, like a classic. Yeah. Like, again, at this point, it was fully inspired by... I don't even think... Do I have... I don't know if I do, damn. Hmm. Um. Surely it's somewhere. Anyway. Yeah, one of the other ones, like, you may have seen this. I don't remember if this is during the time where we were talking a lot, but it was something I posted to Instagram, like, way back in the day. Uh, it was, like, basically what kickstarted me, like, g like wanting to get into music, genuinely. Uh, so it's like one one of my uh, one of my sonas at the time, getting ready to go to sleep, uh, like suddenly like my uh, my brain is just like on the floor behind me, <laughs> and I love the way that I did this as well because he's just like in a puddle of liquid and he's got glasses on as well. <laughs> That's fun. <laughs> it's kind of cute. I'll just send it to you real quick. Um, do, 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 do. And it's just like, what if we learn how to make music? I know we don't have any knowledge on it, but it'd be cool if we did and i'm just like you motherfucker i'm not going to sleep now it's just like the, the, doing those are fun they're good ways is of that like, old sprite uh that's actually his name is parker that makes more sense yeah, yeah okay. it does look like sprite to be fair but uh yeah no that's uh like i didn't have him for a I wasn't using it for a super long time. Uh, it was basically just an excuse for me to be able That's to draw my tattoo. That's such a cute tattoo. brain. That's such a cute brain. I know. I love how the little brain came out. <laughs> like, but I just love the detail of, like, he's just in a puddle of I, just liquid. I I love that brain. That brain is so cute. <laughs> he's so adorable. Um, oh, my gosh. But, yeah, that's, like, eh, what I just do. Uh, every now and then just to get ideas out of my head I make a little little comic uh, a little comic every now and then uh, bigger comic ideas I have one of them y you know very well because you're very heavily involved in it is Spider Menace yeah ah oh, whoops yeah <laughs> oh fuck I guess technically that is another idea fuck yeah <laughs> oh. um, so we have spider sonas uh, because of course we do. Yeah. Mine is a very on brand. He's a demon. Have we uh, talked about it on the show? I don't think we have. I don't think we have. I'm not, I won't give away a ton of detail because it's it's a thing that we're, we're like, we are working on. And we want to do like, more. We, we do want to make stuff with him. But like, uh, it's a version of Spider. Mm, yeah, no, he's a version of Spider Man that is like a demon that's just like uh, been kicked out of hell and he's on Earth now. Uh, and there hasn't really, and of course there hasn't been a Spider-Man before at this time in this universe. Uh, but it's a, I would say he has a very like strong kind of like Deadpool like personality. Be because of course I love Deadpool. Of course I'm gonna make a character that's basically acts the exact same way that Deadpool does, except for the fourth wall breaks. He does, I don't think he's aware of the fourth wall. No, that's the way nah. he talked about it hasn't. Um, I mean, I love the origin of that character, you sending through a design, being like, what do I name him? And I'm like, Spider Menace. Yeah. <laughs> you're like, immediately like, Spider Menace. And then, and I was like, Spider Menace, you're like, oh fuck, that's a good name. And I was like, yep. And then I proceeded to give you the universe. Yeah. 
That was probably the you... one, like that was probably the first time you got to experience that. Oh yeah, like witnessing you just brain dump like uh like a good chunk of a story just like within an afternoon as well. Yeah, it's being like, like something being like oh here's like your like, six arc like series of comics you like you do six arcs you cut like your five like your five basic arcs you set up your story beginning middle end you do all that stuff on here's all your villains that would exist in this reality given like the way you kind of talk about it and stuff like that here's how they would be slightly different to you know obviously fit the theme a bit more um if i'm allowed to say one i I might use the lizard as a good example um Mm. if that's still fine with you (laughs) Yeah, yeah, go ahead. So, because basically how we're looking at it was like, cool. If if if, if hell is the thing in this reality, and it is a it is a Spider Man that has come from that place and is now on Earth and doing shit there, it means that the environment of the world is going to be a bit more different if that is a very basis of this reality or at the very least the story we're telling. So you know, certain heroes might be around, might not be around. It depends on the thing. Um, mm. So like, and like the heroes that are going to be focusing on are more like going to be stuff like Daredevil or Ghost Rider, etc. and so forth. And with that, you could also change around with some of the villains. Like for example, um, instead of focusing a bit more on science, you focus maybe a little bit more on magic. Like obviously we have Doctor Connors, yeah. you know, makes a si- makes a lizard injection, turns itself to a lizard, whoopsie daisies. Instead, instead of like instead of that working, the science fails him, so he goes to mystic stuff, makes a deal with the devil, becomes the lizard, and now mm. spider Menace has to fight him. Uh, spider Menace, of course, the name comes from just a very simple thing of, they would uh, they would tease J. Jonah Jameson. They would yeah. make fun of him. <laughs> and <laughs> be climbing across his window, and he's like, hey, get down from there! Fuck you! <laughs> Flips, flips J- Jameson off. It's like, I can do what I want. I'm just yeah. going to sit up here and make a comic. Fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> Man, like, I just love characters that are just little shits, basically. They just like to cause mischief. Like, th- those are some of my favorite characters, like, in, in media in general. Yeah, they're really fun. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Tragically, I don't have a ton of art of Spider Menace, but like he'll he'll get more. Yeah, because um, like we're focusing on the writing more at the moment, anyway. Yeah. Oh boy. Yeah. Um Before I get into my Spider character, I want to do say the comic I think I had prior. So I'm gonna have to make a long story short and cut out a bunch of shit because I'm like, mm, there's other ideas for other things. I had an idea for a TV show. That oh, is yeah. a thing I do want to make. But outside of the TV show, and tangentially related, um, like, kind of same universe, hard to explain, I'm not going to get into it. Um, and it was a superhero universe I was making with a friend of the show, Corey. Um, oh, yeah? Back when, it probably was around about 16, it was probably 17. Wow. Um... We call this character like and like I, I'm saying this one now because I'm like I I have so much of this character I have the start and end of their like of their story, um, roughly planned out, um, which is a bunch of comics and a few movies, <laughs> um, and so basically teenage superhero whatever shit, um, they have like. With the help of their friend, they and they're very smart, very clever, a bit Tony Starky. Um, they make oh, yeah. uh, they make their own superhero suit. Um, I love I was, how we both have characters that are just very Tony Stark inspired. <laughs> yeah, well, the colors of the particular suit is um, based. I, now I don't have the original files. I think mm. I only have a few images of them, but basically, uh, the original suit is very much inspired by Upgrade. Um, the Ben 10 guy, because I really like the green and white and black tied together, and it's like this, like it's like it's like a like a bit of like a nano type suit, and it basically allows them to like move around the city really quickly. They have these like glasses that can like be like their visor and stuff, and it kind of holds their identity secret. Um, and it like like the glasses on it completely changes their hair color to green. It adjusts everything. Um, and basically, they're fighting crime. Um, like, we have, like, villains we had planned out. I'd have to... Okay, hold on. I have I have a Word document of, like, their story. Mm. Uh, so, like, 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 we have, like, a story notes dot point. So, like, 
So like in their normal life, meet up with friends to, to have their own characters. Uh, you know, they see the two main girls who are hanging out, like doing stuff in science, pulling out notepad, test tubes, kind of stealing some stuff. Experiment goes wrong, explodes, like class gets attention, like whatever. So they, they meet up to show off like the suit that they designed. It's real fun. Uh, explains what it is, blah, blah, blah. Just, like vaguely going through it now and having a look. Cause I have not seen this shit since when would this have been made? 2018. Damn. <laughs> okay. Um, like the they're intending on going to like the school dance. Like they're, they're looking to go to the school dance. Looking forward to it. They get bullied by a uh, mildly nothing too bad. Good on me. Good description. Uh, do more testing. Stops the first crime. A uh, friend being like the earpiece. See a montage of testing. Uh, they end up going together to the dance because no one else um, asked them or anything. Which, in retrospect, make it queer. Um, yeah. <laughs> that's the thing. Like, yeah. Yeah. That's happened to some of my like super old stories as well. One of them was actually like uh, that happened because of a friend I had at the time. Uh, like. <laughs> I just, uh, this is another super old comic that, like, it didn't really go super far because I just couldn't figure stuff out. But it was, like, the two main characters was, like, again, these are wolves. Uh, one is, like, su super strong, buff, uh, wolf guy. He's got, like, a, the spirit of another wolf guy who just, uh, follows him everywhere because of this, uh, pendant that he carries. And, uh, originally, like, uh, there was gonna be, like, some sort of, like, hetero romance somewhere in there, maybe... And then the friend I always talked to, like, on the bus, specifically, she was like, why don't you just make them gay? And I was like, I've never done that before. I am 13, but I will do that. <laughs> uh, so I kept reading down the document. It got dark quickly. <laughs> <laughs> but it's an origin story for a superhero, so it's not like it's... Yeah. But I But it didn't shy away from things. So, like, they're at the school dance, having a fun time. Robots come in with crime organization symbol on their chest. They hold the school hostage. If do not, if if they do not comply, kids will die. Which I'm like, that fucking a. Hmm. Um. Uh, obviously, a teacher tries to do something. Teacher gets shot, not killed. People start to panic and run away. In this commotion, three of the bullies and the mate. Uh. No, but if we make it queer, then it's killing a queer characters. Fuck. Shit. <laughs> Um, basically, uh, best friend and three of the bullies from earlier are all killed. Uh, hmm. uh, uh, main character, whose name was Scarlet, um, uh, like, uh, still wearing the suit underneath, runs into the Katie, says something to Scarlet, uh, just as she's about to attack the hero, finally arrives. Like, because it's a world of superheroes, as, like, uh, as she's, like, holding her friend in her arms, a superhero rocks up, defeats the bat, like, the rest of the robots, sorts that out, but, you know, too late for that. Uh, after it goes home, sees the fam like, cries to her family, goes to the funeral. Um, s like, Sue's been active for weeks. Like, Scarlet decides to take revenge on that company and bring them down. Um, into which uh, she eventually learns that one of the people running this company is one of her classmates who has been put into the position. Mm. Um, and. Uh, she is very fun and has a morning star as a weapon. Uh, <laughs> God damn. Uh, but yeah, so that was the basic like origin plot point. And then like you know like I th like because the original suit has like a skirt and stuff, which every time we see the character, the suit has been updated to be more practical and reasonable. Oh yeah. <laughs> so it's like it's like not a skirt anymore, and it's shorts. So it's sorting that like like as it gets like more and more equipped, and like like how Iron Man like keeps getting more and more fancy and more and more like up. Something like that. Um, yeah. They they do a lot of solo adventures of sort of things. They eventually like for the movies. Um, they join a team. Now I might hmm. use some of these ideas later, but also the ideas are free. But I'll give credit where credit's due for some of these ones. So there's a team. Um, they eventually join a team like a super like Avengers, Justice League, blah blah blah. Like there was no name I could come up with for them that didn't sound shit because all the good names are taken. <laughs> yeah. I was like, well, fuck. But um. The villain of that movie, because I was like, well, what, I what would be a good villain for a team-up movie? 
because I've never been 100% satisfied. Now, this one comes from a Plumbing the Death Star episode that Sans Pants did um, called, like, What Would Your Ultimate Crime Causing Power Be? In which uh, Jackson suggests the idea of a character who, when they die, their consciousness swaps into the next living being. Hmm. And I'm like, now that's a threat. That is interesting. Yeah. How do you stop that? Um, so that is... Oh, fuck, I just remembered one of the characters from the comic. It was a <laughs> sentient skeleton. He was the gag character. Because everyone was upset by his appearance. Because it was a 1950 skeleton who regained consciousness, came out of the cave, and stopped crime. And the premise was like, you know, kicks down the door of the bank getting robbed. The guy's like, what the fuck? It's like, nah, ha, ha, it's me, the skeleton guy. I'm gonna stop you now. You better not rob this shin dig of a bank. He's like, fuck, and he runs. And the skeleton catches up to him, being like, ha, ha, no on lactic acid for me. <laughs> so we could catch up to him no matter what. He could just chase him forever. Um, oh my God. And the solution to the movie and how to stop the bad guy was they, um, they basically trapped him in a way of they killed everything around, like, the area that they could, and they trapped him in the skeleton, because the skeleton was really conscious, but also not. It, it was kind of living, but not really. So they trapped him in the skeleton, but in doing that, they had to send the skeleton off to space, so they did lose a teammate. Um, hmm. But they set up the skeleton to space, and that's how they defeated that bad guy. Who, look, I, th again, I'm giving credit. That's a fucking good premise for a character, for a villain. I really like that. And especially for, like, a team thing of, like, fuck, how do we stop that? I think that's really good. I don't know. I was like, look, he's fine. But this is a, this is an, this is what you need a team for. Um, <laughs> and then the second movie kind of tied a little bit back into the TV show. Um, but basically it was like the Civil War type thing. Team kind of falls mm. apart. Things aren't particularly great. But they are also fighting. They're not like, they're fighting each other, but like a little bit. But they're also, but the main thing they're fighting is the evil team. Because they also like that trope. I like when it's right, like, oh, it's yeah. the bad guy team. And they don't all have the same powers. That would be stupid. They have all different powers. But you <laughs> know, they are the bad guy team versus good guy team. And the good guy team falls apart by the end of the movie. You know, they're, they're split mm. up the separate ways. They're, like, some people still stay on the team, some people don't stay on the team. Like, the team still exists, but it's a little bit more fractured. Um, and the final movie, I don't remember what the villain was for them, um, but the opening scene was, there was a, a couple, like, creatures, like, fighting on the moon. Like, it was the bad guy from the first movie um, fighting the main antagonist of the new one, of this, of, like, the third movie. Um, hmm. and like the guy was like jumping around like being all cocky because like you know it's very hard to def you can't really defeat him but then the bad guy of this movie does actually kill him hmm. like they did I'm like hmm that is threatening that is like very hmm. upsetting if the villain of your first movie is killed by the villain of your third movie you know yeah. shows stakes very good Um, uh, I don't remember what the villain was what type of villain they were uh, but um, Evergreen does die in that movie. Uh, Dang. You know when Tony Stark gets stabbed in Infinity War? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Same wound, but to death. Because right. Yeah, I was like, well, you know, not everyone's going to survive that. But yeah, that's kind of where the character ended, roughly. I gave you like <laughs> a very basic rundown, because fucking A, it's been forever. <laughs> I don't remember as much as I thought I did. But that's oh, that comic. Yeah. Anyway, so I have a spider so well, Yeah, I have do. a spider OC. Because every time I try to make a spider sonar, it didn't quite work for me, and I wasn't quite satisfied. Mm. So my premise for the world is like, okay, if Damer's one's about all hell and shit, my one is uh, five years prior to the events of my story, the Avengers fucked up, and we have an eternal winter on New York. Yes. Uh, the Avengers have pretty much disbanded. They're not really a thing. Heroes are still around, sorting out stuff, but, you know, like, some people are dead, some people quit. doesn't matter. Five years mm. on, I just... The, the setting is permanently snowing. I wanted to keep that. That's, like, the reason. And also, it was just so drastically different and tone, yeah. like, like light-wise and universe-wise. Two, there was one with spider Menace, where I imagine the world is just... Like, that universe is just a tinge a bit red. Mm. Like, it just kind of is like that. Yeah. 
But yeah, no. My one's just called Spider Man because I'm like, you don't need to change the name all the time. Spider Man quite oh, works. Yeah. Um, uh, their name is Pen Parker. Uh, they start off as a girl and they dress up as a guy to fight crime because if you're going to hide your secret identity, what, what is a good thing to use? A binder. Yeah. Uh, it is obvious to everyone except for them that they are queer. <laughs> Because we are, as you like, a little shit kicker. I love an oblivious. <laughs> I love an yeah. oblivious person who is dumb. <laughs> that is my favorite trope. But um. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so, again, five arc story, different villains, like different things, other stuff. I have some fun stuff planned. I would like more art for it, but I can't properly draw comics yet. So a little bit different on my end. <laughs> I have to mm. commission everything. Um, I've tried to draw uh, Spider Man, like my Spider Man, and every time I'm like, I, why did I design you like this? I love the design, but I don't. <laughs> it is so hard to find references for the little weird cape thing. Oh, yeah. Hood thing. I fucking A. <laughs> but um, yeah. no. I love them dearly. I would like to do more art of them. They are really Heck cool. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, they are, I guess, the only comic thing that is still intended to be done. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, like, I've got a, got a couple of ones like, I'll mention real quick. Uh, and then there's, like, another one I want to go into, like, a little bit of detail. Not too much, because we've been recording for a while. Yeah, but, like, uh, Yeah, so... Uh, this is supposed to be a short episode. Yeah. <laughs> Not, like, overly short, like an hour ten. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, whoops. <laughs> so yeah, one of my other uh, stories is like I've been working on for like a decent amount of time since I was like sixteen or something. Uh, as like my little dis- kind of semi dystopian mutant universe. This is the one yeah, I, I like uh, we did explained talk about to you this. a little bit back. Yeah, that was fun. Yeah, it's been like surprisingly not rewritten that much because by the time I started writing it I was already like fairly competent uh, in my story writing and pretty uh, confident in that as well uh, so not much has changed uh, it's like basically I, like I mentioned like mutant like story kind of thing that's even what I have in the folder called because I'm very bad at titles <laughs> it's, I'll it's basically work out like, something for you at some point yeah it's like um, uh, people have been turned into mutants uh, somewhere, and like their, their their government is shit, so they're kind of just stuck that way. <laughs> so that's that one. Uh, another one that's like a little bit more lighthearted, I'll say. Uh, it's like this big old cat universe, uh, which is where like all of these anthro cat characters that I've been showing you, Kara, are going into. Yeah, I know uh, the cat universe. I know of the universe. I've been watching it with an eye and being like, I wonder what's going to happen with this. Yeah, it's like, it's a little, it's funky. Because um, I have a weird habit of like when I'm writing stories is that um, usually like I start off with a character who's meant to be the main character. And then they end up as a side character. So I can uh, use one of the other side characters as the main character and that's yeah, been the case for the majority of the stuff that i've written that's so funny i don't have a single main character for this cat universe yet <laughs> so funny. like i don't know maybe it'll just be like an episodic just like um i don't know following random people every now and then that's not a bad idea actually <laughs> uh but yeah there's there's those ones i'm like just I'm basically just making random characters for it at the moment, seeing what sticks, seeing what doesn't. Uh, it, it, it's not. It's. It was going to s- just be like a slice of life kind of thing, and then cheese got involved, so now there's gods in it. So it's not really. It, if it's going to be a slice of life, it's going to be a very chaotic slice of life, because now you have like all-knowing deities. <laughs> um, and then yeah, last 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 comic I'll mention is also something that like in a similar vein to Flightless is something that I've had for a very long time. I've like I think I did mention it a bit earlier. It's the Warriors like fan comic uh, that I mentioned a bit back. I've had this thing for a very very long time. Uh, 
and like I've got like a lot of very early comic stuff in it, and the characters are very strongly developed in it. Um, and every now and then I kind of just go back to it and like uh, tweak a few things and just be like, yeah, no, that that's pretty cool. And there's like two uh, pieces in particular which I'll I'll send to you, which I'm like, uh, I looked at the other day as I was like scrolling for notes for this, and I was like, damn, those are pretty fucking good actually and one i'm pretty sure i made when i was like 16 17 the other made uh i think i was like 18 so i'll send this through real quick um but the crux of this universe is like it's warriors but like it's a bit more like mature i've kind of like uh reworked how the lore and like how the world building works a little bit because as much as I love warriors, it, like it, it is a, it is technically like a children's novels, which isn't bad, but it, it's like it just gets to moments where it's like, eh, I really wouldn't write it like that, so I'm gonna write my own. <laughs> Clever. So like oh, this is, is like a. Art. Yeah. So like I'm... the. Yeah. So the first one is like yeah, it's got the three characters together, it's kind of like a more simplified chibi style. But, I, I, yeah, I saw it the other day, and I was like, fuck, oh, that's, like, a really interesting image, actually. That, like, that one that looks like a cover, genuinely, yes, if uh, I saw that in store, I'd be like, oh, neat. Yeah. Like, yeah, that no, genuinely like, looks like something I could find at, like, a fucking bookshop. Yeah, so that was a concept art for, like, um, yeah, like, a, a newer version of it as a comic. And that was uh, the style of that cover was directly inspired by the saga comic series yeah it does have saga energy <laughs> yeah because like i love the way that they do their cover art and those and i was like i want to try that out because like it's it's just nice it just works it, it's like the character is on like a fairly simple background but like you can you can tell what's going on as well and it's just like yeah it's a, it a really neat experiment and like yeah it's like Something, yeah, something I just go back to every now and then because I love the concept of a Warriors universe that's just, like, more adult-oriented, which, like, the fandom does do, like, quite a fair amount. But I'm more... I'm just more interested in seeing them, like, cuss each other out and, and just, like... <laughs> There's a cat sitting there and being like, get fucked. Yeah, basically. <laughs> <laughs> the main differences between canon warriors universe and my warriors universe is that a they can cuss and b they actually call their parents like mom and dad and stuff like that instead of their actual names because <laughs> yeah in the warriors series they just call their parents by their names and then once they uh, reach like basically teenagerhood they're not like i mean they're cats granted but still, like, once they reach teenagerhood, it's like they never had parents before. They just treat them like uh, every other, like, cat. <laughs> Unless they're a main character, that is. <laughs> but yeah, uh, that's, like, probably 50% of the comics I've made. Fair enough. And I should stop there, because we've been going on for a, uh, a good little bit. bit. But we do tend to yabble on. Yabble oh, yeah. On. And, like, this is stuff we're passionate about as well. Yeah, so like, I mean, that's why we're yeah. doing an episode, and I'm very glad we did that to talk about it. Um, yeah. On, on that note, I think, I, I've been Kara. Yeah, I've been Damon. I, I don't have anything else to bring out, otherwise I'll just remember more things and be like, we'll wait, part no, two. this! <laughs> we'll do a part two when we actually make more comics. That's or, not, yeah, that's not a bad idea. But yeah, um, so good night, enjoy your slumber. Yes, um, good night. Have sweet, sweet dreams of some lovely comics. I um, do not apologize for my fan in the background, by the way. It's fucking humid. I am sweating so much. Is This is the only reason. Like, if I didn't have my fan on right now, uh, I, I would be miserable <laughs> and the vibes would be off. I, I mean, you could probably tell that I have been sweating by some I, of the energy <laughs> I did bring. Yeah, fair. Good, uh, good night. <laughs> good night.